around and skate around the whole ice and put on a show and jump around and freak out, okay? Something's wrong cause my mind is fading And everywhere I look there's a dead end waiting Temperatures dropping at the rotten oasis Stealing kisses from the leprous faces all right, this is your Hockey Fans Mail. Thursday, March 5th, post-deadline edition. Nothing overly spectacular to talk about, but uh, certainly lots to talk about. Start off with the Canadian team, start with Ottawa. And uh, I gotta say, I really gotta like their trade for Pascal Leclerc, for Antoine Vermet. I really like the fact that Ottawa didn't have to give up a ton for him. The market for goalies was pretty good. And he is a bona fide number one. He played well last year. And anyone who knows anything about goaltending knows the goalies simply do not play well in injury years. It almost never happens. It's very rare. Uh, the elite of the elite, uh, guys like Brodeur, guys like that can do it. But most goalies, they just don't have the greatest years, especially younger goalies when they get injured. But great pickup by Ottawa. Very smart little pickup. Next on the list, uh, we'll go west to the Calgary Flames. And uh, first I want to talk about the uh, trade for Jordan Leopold. Uh, bringing back a depth defenseman uh, for the playoffs is uh, probably a good idea because this year they do have a possible shot at this. I don't know that Leopold's going to make a huge difference, but if a guy gets injured or, or what have you, you do have the depth. So Of course they picked up uh, Ole Jokinen. I don't mind this trade because Jokinen is not the number one guy and because he's playing under Mike Keenan and he's proven that he does play well under him. I don't care that he hasn't played a playoff game. I don't think that necessarily matters because, again, it's not on his shoulders. He is the, the third string, fourth, fifth string in terms of leadership or, or, or whatever, ice time. The teams around them didn't add anything. So this brings them up maybe to their levels. The team that has all Canadians, their entire roster, other than now Leopold, Ole Jokinen, and Mika Kiprasov. Every other guy on their roster is from Canada. They have more Canadians than any NHL team this season. And uh, if you're looking for a bandwagon to jump on and you're a Canadian... Not just because of where they are in the standings, but also because of the fact that they're full of Canadians. I guess if you're looking for a team to cheer for, you could argue Canada's team going to the playoffs this year. The Leafs picked up Gerber. Uh, obviously, tosco has got to get surgery if he's if his groin and hip are that bad. Uh, you got to do it. I totally like it. Uh, as long as Gerber's not around next year, I have no problem whatsoever with this uh, pickup just to get through. Uh, I like the idea that you do try to win as many games as you can. And, I mean, they did just raise ticket prices, so you better try to win as many games as you can. You know, he'll play probably 10 or 15 games to end the year, and that'll be the end of it. No big deal. And uh, the Leafs dished uh, Nicky Antropov to the Rangers. They got a second-round pick and a conditional pick in, in 2010. I would like to see the Leafs re-sign Antropov in July. I know he likes it. I know he's a Canadian citizen. He's got a good attitude, and he's good now. I mean, yeah, he, he had his years where he underachieved, but he's good now. And under Ron Wilson, he, he, he'll do just fine, and he'll thrive. I would like to see them re-sign him, but not. I, I think for me the maximum would be three million a season. But outside of that, even if they don't, I do like this trade. You got to pick up picks, and uh, that's what the guy's worth. They also dished off Dominic Moore to the Buffalo Sabers for a second-round pick. Yeah, I like Dominic Moore, and I, I kind of was hoping the Leafs would keep him because of the chemistry with Blake. But the fact is, he's he's looking at he's asking for two point seven five million dollars. And the question you got to ask yourself is, if he wasn't playing for the Toronto Maple Leafs, would he even be getting top six ice time like he is? I know he's putting up pretty good numbers, and you know Antropov's making made two the last two years, and he's a twenty five goal scorer. And uh, Hagman got uh, twenty eight goals or whatever he got last year, and he's making three. So I don't see how you can pay pay more, really more than two a year. And a two a year, I'd take more. But, uh, and who knows if he'll come back in the offseason, I doubt it. But a second-round pick coming the other way, I don't mind this at all. Edmonton, uh, pick up Patty O'Sullivan in a second-rounder in 09 uh, in exchange for Eric Cole and a fifth-round pick in uh, 09 uh, in that three-way deal with the Kings everything else. I really like this deal. I like Patrick O'Sullivan. Eric Cole is getting older. Eric Cole's had some injuries. Eric Cole is comfortable in Carolina. I think this works out okay for them too. But I like... Uh, O'Sullivan going the other way and I like the fact that they got a uh, second round pick the other way as well in exchange for a fifth nice little job there by Tambellini as far as Alex Kotalik for a second round pick Kotalik's a bit of a dip I don't really like him he's a pest and uh, I don't really like the, his style of play I like bona fide tough guys personally um, I don't really mind it especially on a postseason run to have a guy like that take away some attention uh, from other guys and uh, so Edmonton did a really good job Montreal did uh, I guess their trade was the Schneider trade uh, the Habs uh, have uh, a ways to go they're not like an Ottawa or a Leaf but they're certainly not a, a Calgary or a Vancouver either they're kind of a 
Whatever. Kovalev can't be your number one guy if you think you're going to win the Stanley Cup. It's just not, I don't think it's possible. In terms of Vancouver, uh, the Vancouver Canucks uh, didn't do anything. And um, I like the fact that they didn't go after Gabrick. Uh, much to a lot of people say, oh, they go after Gabrick. Gabrick is a prima donna. Gabrick wants astronomical money for, uh, and, and he's injured constantly. This is not the type of guy you really want, and he's been a dressing room cancer. I know Demetra has too, but you get both of them in there, maybe, you know, it's just a risk. I like the fact that he didn't do anything. Hey, I don't know that Vancouver's really going to go anywhere uh, in terms of a cup. They're a pretty solid team, and, and Luongo's a very good goaltender. Don't put them on Calgary's level. I don't put them that far behind, though, either. I think they're pretty darn close. Anaheim had a pretty busy day. Brendan Morrison got picked up, so that was good for them. Dallas picked up Brendan Morrison. Not really sure why. Monador uh, was traded to Boston. Eric O'Neill for Eric Christensen. I don't mind that. I like Christensen. He's a pretty good player. They also traded away Paulson, Stevenson. Anaheim is a uh, Changing. Their, 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 team is, their team identity is changing quite a bit here. They also got rid of Travis Moen and Ken Huskins. Brought in Nick uh, Bonino, who's a, a college player, good hockey player. And uh, the New York Rangers also picked up Derek Morris for uh, Dimitri Kalinin, Nigel Dawes, and Peter Pruka. Morris, to me, is uh, a waste of time. I mean, don't get me wrong, Kalinin's nothing to write home about either, but... Uh, I don't really get the deal, to be honest with you. Pittsburgh picked up Bill Guerin for their power play. Good pickup. Pittsburgh will make the playoffs. Pittsburgh is a better team than uh, the way things have gone. So I like the pickup, Bill Guerin, for a conditional pick. I really like it a lot because Pittsburgh is going to need Bill Guerin to uh, score a few for them down the stretch here and get them into the playoffs. Mark Recchi went to Boston along with a second-round pick in 10. A couple of prospects. Big whoop to do He gives them another guy. Just another little shooter. Uh, another guy with a lot of playoff experience and some leadership. So Marc-Andre Fleury got his 100th uh, win of his career, and uh, kudos to him. And in, of course, stark contrast, the uh, veteran went ahead and got his 100th shutout uh, this past week. So just to, just to show you how amazing that really is, 100 shutouts, and uh, good for Marty Brodeur. I never liked Waugh. I always found him to be very arrogant. I realized that both of these men have had uh, problems in their personal lives, which isn't necessarily um, a criteria for anything, but I just never liked Waugh. I just didn't like his attitude. He was always cocky. He didn't want to play in the Olympics in 02 because he wasn't guaranteed a number one spot, and he whined and cried about it. And uh, sorry, buddy, but you lost in 98, and Brodeur was playing awesome, and look where he is now. So a guy like Brodeur uh, now being bandied about in the media and uh, by people uh, as the best goalie ever. I don't know if he is either because there's guys that played before any of us were alive and guys like Clint Benedict and some of these guys played in different eras with no masks and afraid all the time and stuff like that. Some of them played in areas where you weren't even allowed to go down. So I don't know that you can call Brodeur necessarily the best ever either. But I'm happy that Waugh is no longer being talk talked about as the best ever and certainly won't be by the time Broder's finished his career. Everybody's saying how Ovechkin's unbelievable and everything else. And he is a really amazing shooter, okay? And he has scored some great goals. But I want everybody to realize Bobby Orr was scoring goals like Ovechkin is 40 years ago. Uh, that behind the back, into the net, Orr did that, that exact same thing 40, 50 years ago. The exact same thing, except he passed it to a guy on the other side who put it in. It's it's not that Ovechkin shouldn't get excited. Okay, it's not that he's a jerk because he, he he's happy he scores. When a guy goes like this, you can see he's happy he scores. Uh, you don't need to dive and do a slip and slide. Okay, you don't need to run around and skate around the whole ice and put on a show and jump around and freak out. Okay. Once in a while, you know what, it would be okay. Honestly, a lot of people wouldn't mind it if it was once in a while, if it was a huge goal, really important game. I wouldn't mind it, okay? But when you're doing it all the time, and if I see Alexander Ovechkin jump around and bang the glass after he taps in a two-footer on a five-on-three, I'm going to slit my throat. Hockey fans, mail for today. Have a good one. See you next week.